everybody, I'm Andrew Brogdon and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage. Today, with the help of my partner, Gary the Graphics Guy, I'm gonna talk about AdMob and Google Analytics for Firebase. Publishers have been able to use Analytics and AdMob together for a while now, but engineering just rolled out some new features that make them smarter and more powerful in combination. Plus, everything I'm about to show you requires no code changes beyond a Gradle or pod file update, and the analytics are free and unlimited. I know, right? That's the most fun sentence I've gotten to say in this entire video series. All right, now. Okay, let's take a look at how AdMob and Google Analytics for Firebase are working together. If you're already a Firebase developer, or you saw our earlier episode introducing AdMob with Firebase, you're probably familiar with these. They're the Gradle dependencies and CocoaPods for AdMob and Firebase Core. That core includes analytics. So when you build your app with these, you get the SDKs for both of those services included. Now, they each have a backend service in the cloud that they send data to. That's how you get all that juicy AdMob reporting data and all the stats that show up in analytics. The new piece that the engineering team just finished building is this, a link between the two systems, which means AdMob reporting data, real dollars and cents, now appears in Google Analytics for Firebase, and analytics data shows up in AdMob reporting. So again, all you have to do is make sure you've linked your AdMob app to a Firebase project in the AdMob app settings and make sure you're building it with these dependencies on Android and these CocoaPods on iOS, and this connection will start working for you. Now, let's take a look at that how that data is made available once it's up there on the server. We'll start with the AdMob reporting interface and see what analytics data we can play with. All right, so here's the AdMob UI, and some of you might be thinking, hey, that looks different than it did when I logged in this morning. At iOS 17, AdMob announced a new version of the web UI, and it's being rolled out right now you get the same AdMob functionality plus some new stuff like mediation groups right in there, and look for a blog post about them in the video description, plus a new material design look. Because the UI has been updated, I'm just gonna go over real quick how to link an AdMob app with Firebase. So here, you just go to App Settings, and you can see the option to link is right there. So I just click the Link to Firebase button, and I'm asked to confirm the package name of the app, I like to use the package names for uh, my app names when registering apps in AdMob, so I can just tape the same thing again. Uh, Firebase bases a lot of stuff on bundle IDs and package names, so it's important to get these right. Now AdMob's checked my Firebase account and given me the option to connect with an existing project or start a new one, and I'm gonna start a new one. So I type in a name for my new Firebase project, click Continue, and I'm linked up. So again, all that's really required here is to use the Gradle and CocoaPod dependencies you just saw and link your app. Uh, do make sure that when you do the link, you don't forget to grab the configuration file right there uh, and drop it into your project as well. Check our Firebase Quick Start, and there's a link for that in the description for more details on what's in that file. Okay, so let's say it's a week after I release my new version with analytics compiled in and I come back to the AdMob UI. What new things can I see? So there's two big ones, and they're right here on this screen, the revenue card and user metrics. I like revenue, so let's check that one out first and zoom in. Cool, so first you get a straight bar chart that shows you the revenue generated by your app, which doesn't seem like much, but notice these categories down here. That's not just ad revenue. By hooking into Firebase, AdMob is able to give you the big picture, including all the ways you're earning. So if you've got a game out there with in-app purchases and ads, you don't have to go bouncing around different consoles to get all the numbers, it's right there. All right, on the user metrics card, it's a dashboard presenting some important numbers for app publishers. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory, like sessions per day and active users. There are a couple I wanna point out though. First is ad exposure. This is a measure of how much of the user's session was spent being exposed to ads. Ideally, you wanna make the revenue you need while keeping that number low, so it's good to keep an eye on it. The other stats I want to point out are the average revenue numbers. These tell you the average revenue per user and the average revenue per paying user. ARPU, as it's called, is all your revenue divided by all your users, and it's a key stat. RPPU, which I can't pronounce with a straight face, calculates IAP and commerce revenue for users making a purchase, which lets you know how you're doing with users engaged enough to open their wallets. So that's AdMob reporting, which gives you the same kind of information you're used to getting, but with new intelligence from Google Analytics for Firebase. Now let's take a look at the Analytics console and see how AdMob data makes an impact there. So here we are in the Firebase console in the Analytics section, and I'm gonna scroll right down and zoom into the first thing I wanna show you, which is LTV or lifetime value. There we go. 
Previously, this value did not include ad mob ad revenue, but after the link up between systems, it does. So this number can now tell you how much total revenue from ads and purchases you're averaging per user. If you're running a universal app campaign in AdWords to grow your user base, you need to know how much revenue you can expect from each user so you can figure out how much you can spend to acquire them. And with ad mob data included, you've now got a complete value. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out and head over to the events tab now to show you two new events that have made their way into analytics. And they're right here at the top, ad click and ad impression. These are automatically generated for you and you can use them just like any other event, session start, change of screen, you name it. So let me dig into one. Let's do ad impression and I'm gonna take a spin down the page once it gets loaded up. There we go. So these are broken down by ad unit right now. And I've got stats for clicks, impressions, and revenue, plus that new ad exposure metric is available. Uh, let me show you a cool trick you can do here. I'm gonna change the grouping from ad unit to grouping by screen class. This field is generated for you using the class names for activities and view controllers, or you can customize it with calls into the analytics library on the mobile side. Check out game board and main menu here. You can see the ad exposure is almost entirely on game board. It's 94% compared to only 1.3% for the main menu. That's more than 70 to one, but when I look at revenue, it's about 15 to one. That means my users are more receptive on the main menu than they are while playing the game, which is a piece of intel I can use in shaping my monetization strategy. Maybe I wanna try removing ads on the game board and using something like an interstitial that appears between actions. Or maybe I wanna try a richer format like native in the main menu, see if I can push engagement even higher there. The idea here is that analytics gives you actionable intelligence on your users that you can really put to work. All right, I'm gonna pop back out to the list of events now. And I just wanna mention that once you've got analytics in your app, you can start extending it for a custom solution. For example, these ad events are automatic, but if you want your app to log an event called reward received every time a user watches a rewarded video ad to completion, you can do that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to the Firecast series, which can show you how to log your own events in analytics. In addition, I also have all the other Firebase services that I can choose to integrate, like Remote Config. For example, I can make a custom audience based on my events and send different configurations down to the device based on that. I could create a reward received event, like we just talked about, make an audience of those users who've experienced it, and then use Remote Config to turn off all the other ad formats in the app and focus on rewarded video. Uh, you'd have to spend a day or two in mobile code to make that happen, but it's there if you want it. Similarly, if I have a subset of my users that spend a lot on in-app purchases, maybe I'd prefer to show them a house ad campaign for my other apps instead of normal ad mob ads. I could use remote config to send down different ad units based on audience and then use them to make my ad requests. There's just a ton you can play with here now that all this information is in one place. So that's it for today. Before you go though, I've got some resources for you. If you look down in the description, you'll see links to the ad mob with Firebase quick start guides for Android and iOS plus a Help Center article that covers how to link an ad mob app with a Firebase project in case you haven't done that step. You'll also find a link to our SDK forum where you're welcome to bring any technical questions you have. And if you've got a question about this series or an idea for something you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below and Gary and I will see you next time.